All right, welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles. Now I am Jay Senior. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. As for what we're talking about on the program, you're going to have an opportunity to get to know the 2023 Eagles better because we're going to look at all of the Eagles starters going into the 2023 campaign. We start off at the quarterback position. Jalen Hurts, every year that he's been in the NFL, all three years, he's gotten better and better and better. Can he take that leap into year four after he signed that massive contract extension this past offseason? What he did in 2022 was so impressive. The ball was in his hands so much. He had to do so much in throwing the ball and running it, yet he continued to flourish as the season progressed, and he capped it off with a really impressive performance in Super Bowl 57 against Kansas City. I know the fumble cost the Eagles, but outside of that, tight window throws, touch and accuracy at all three levels of the field. When he had to make plays with his legs, he did that. And he led a couple of really impressive scoring drives for Philadelphia. And I've said this a couple of times, what impressed me the most about Jalen Hurts' play in 2022, it's not the numbers. It's how often the Eagles leaned on him to run their offense and how few times he turned the football over. He chucked it 460 times in the regular season. He ran it 165 more times. That is a lot of touches. Yet, he only threw six interceptions and lost two forced fumbles. So that is eight giveaways for Jalen Hurts. If he can continue to keep the ball out of harm's way, the sky is the limit for this Eagles offense once again in 2023 as he enters year four. If you're pumped up for week one, that should be everybody watching right now. I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Real football is back and the birds return to play. Hit that thumbs up icon, like the video. And speaking of week one, we'll be back for our watch party schedule. Join us on Sunday. Our pregame show starts about a half hour before kickoff, 4 o'clock Eastern. Eagles, Patriots, right here on Eagles now. Live play-by-play, -play, audience interaction, super chat giveaways. You don't want to miss it. So we go from quarterback and Jalen Hurts to running back. And I know I said at the start of the show, we're going to talk about all of the starters for Philadelphia on the program today. We're not sure who the starting running back is going to be. And I think Philadelphia is going to go running back by committee here. If Kenneth Gainwell starts the game, won't surprise me. If DeAndre Swift starts the game, that won't surprise me. I think it comes down to one of those two players with Rashad Penny and Boston Scott being the backups. I've continued to say this. I really like the makeup, the versatility, and the blend of styles for all of these running backs on your screen. To the wide receiver group, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown last year formed one of the most lethal wide receiver duos in the National Football League. And if they're healthy this year, they're both still young. They have another year to work on that camaraderie with Jalen Hurts. And I think that they can put up stupid digits once again like they did a year ago. The Eagles wide receiver depth chart, it's a little bit top heavy. You have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. You can make the argument right now. They are two of the top 10 wide receivers in the game. A.J. definitely is already there. Devontae Smith, if he's not a top 10 guy, he's on the cusp of becoming that. Quez Watkins, big year for him, obviously. The vertical threat who could take the top off of the defense. And I think a lot of people are going to be impressed by Olamide Zacchaeus as a returner, but also as a wide receiver who has a little bit of wiggle. This Eagles wide receiving room, they put up historic production last year. A.J. Brown broke the record for the most receiving yards in a single season in Eagles franchise history. 88 catches, almost 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns. What a debut season it was for him. And then Devontae Smith broke the record for the most catches for a wide receiver in franchise history. A great campaign for him, 95 grabs, almost 1,200 yards and 7 touchdowns. Who's to say those numbers for those two can't get better? And then if Quez Watkins can improve, look out. With that, let's tee up this question. Who has more receiving yards in 2023? Will it be Devontae Smith, type his jersey number 6? Will it be A.J. Brown, type his jersey number 11? Tight end. Dallas Goddard continues to be very underrated in my book. And I've continued to stay by this, that I think that Dallas Goddard is the second best all-around tight end in the NFL. When I say all-around tight end, I have to simplify this because people 
thought that I said he's better than Travis Kelsey. Not the case. Travis Kelsey is a receiving tight end. He lines up in the slot. He does not block. Dallas Goddard, George Kittle, they block and they catch passes. So as far as all-around tight ends go, Dallas Goddard, number two in the league, in my opinion, behind George Kittle. And I think this year, he finally has that season in which he's really, really productive and could surpass 1,000 yards receiving because he's been close to breaking out each of the last four years. Yes, he's missed a little bit of time with injury. Five games last year, uh, five games in 2020. But even though he missed five games a year ago, he still tallied 55 catches, 702 yards, and three touchdowns. I hope that Philadelphia uses him as more of a red zone threat this year. Because if they do, I think that he gives you another element inside the 20 around the goal line. Obviously, he's physical. He can be a jump ball guy. But it's just another option when the fuel gets more condensed. And if he can get 702 yards in 12 games, if he plays a full season, who's to say that he can't surpass 1,000? In the trenches on the offensive side of the football, Philadelphia still very good. And this is one of those position groups that Howie Roseman really covets in building his team. Jordan Mailata, Landon Dickerson, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, all starters from last year. Cam Jurgens does replace Isaac Sayamalo. Some question marks there. I also kind of like the backups along this Eagles offensive line as well. If they stay healthy, once again, they'll be in the running for one of the best offensive lines in the game. You look at week one odds for the Eagles going up against New England, Philadelphia, minus four. If you think the Eagles are going to win via a blowout, smash that number right now. The over-under at 45. I'm going to stay away from that over-under. But if that number gets down to three and a half, I'm going Philadelphia Eagles all the way because I think they win 24 to 20 week one. If you want to bet on this game, no better place to do it than with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Head to chatsports.com slash EaglesBet, promo code Eagles125 for a 125% deposit bonus. Now we pivot to the defensive side of the football. Philadelphia very deep along the defensive line in the trenches, just like they are on the offensive line in the trenches. Now, Philadelphia is not going to have a five-man front, but they are going to have an iteration and some versatile options under Sean Desai, the new defensive coordinator. So that's why there are five players here on your screen. They're going to run some 3-4. They're going to run some 4-3, but there will be some five-man fronts when you move Hassan Reddick to the line of scrimmage to be that outside edge. So Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Josh Sweat. I think you might see Davis and Carter kind of replace each other a little bit as far as the substitution pattern goes. Maybe you take out Fletcher Cox, you put in Milton Williams, but Philadelphia, as far as the entire defensive line goes, very, very deep. And you could throw in Hassan Reddick along the defensive line, or you could call him an outside linebacker. Whatever you do, you can consider him as one of the best pure pass rushers in the game. He's the only player in NFL history to have double-digit sacks three consecutive seasons with three different teams. No better season than what he did last year in his career since getting drafted by Arizona in the first round out of Temple University, fittingly enough, when that draft was in Philadelphia by the Art Museum. 16 sacks for Reddick last year, 26 quarterback hits, 68 pressures. And what a deal it was for the Eagles to get him on that contract of $15 million per year. So Reddick, with that linebacking core of Zach Cunningham, who I think is going to start alongside N'Kobe Dean, great opportunity for N'Kobe Dean this year to prove that he was worthy of that draft selection. A little bit undersized, but does have those instinctual elements to his game where he can really be a special player and sniff plays out before they happen. To cornerback here, Darius Slade, James Bradbury still forming. One of the best cornerback duos in the NFL. They were some of the highest graded cornerbacks according to Pro Football Focus last year. Shout out to one of our loyal subscribers, Dennis Designs. He does not like Avante Maddox, but I think he's more than serviceable in the slot. I also like what Philadelphia and Howie Roseman and this front office and coaching staff are doing as far as building and looking ahead at the future at this cornerback position because Slay and Bradbury still playing at a really high level. They're also getting a little bit older, and Philadelphia knows that. That's why they thought about moving off of both of those players. But to have Josh Job, 
Keely Ringo, Mario Goodrich, and Eli Ricks, all young backups. You fortify the depth, and you get younger at that position group as well. And then we round out at safety. Just for some context, we're recording this on Tuesday. Nick Sirianni did not reveal on Tuesday who was going to start next to Reed Blankenship at strong safety. We know that Blankenship will start. I think that he can have a really solid season this year. Will it be Terrell Edmonds? Will it be Sidney Brown? Will it be Justin Evans? We will see come week one in Foxborough at Gillette Stadium. If you enjoy what we do here on Eagles now, that means that you're a real one. And if you're a real one, get loud in the chat and let us know you're a real one by giving us a real one roll call right now. Thanks for the support. Make sure you subscribe to the show for daily videos on the birds.